Hello and thank you for tuning in to Far Above Rubies today. I'm so very glad that each of you are here. Today as we continue our walk through the book of Romans, we are taking a look at Romans chapter 10 verses 5 through 13 and we're going to talk about the thought being saved. Now I'm going to read today verses 9, verse 10, and then verse 13, okay, to paint our picture for our devotional today. I encourage you to read all of the verses. 9, 10, and 13 say this, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. All right. We're going to go deep here. I hope you stay with me. Buckle your seatbelts and uh, get ready, okay? I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe that every person who speaks the name of Jesus is saved? Think about that for a moment. What about the person who's, who says the name of Jesus Christ in vain? Someone who uses it in the wrong context. Someone who uses it to curse are those people saved because they speak the name of Jesus? What if a person doesn't understand what the name means? Are they saved when they speak it? What if we have so many people, tens of thousands of people named Jesus today? The same name as Jesus Christ. When someone speaks their name, are they saved? Is their soul saved eternally? What about a child who speaks the name of Jesus and does not even understand one bit, one iota about what salvation and faith in God is all about? Are they saved? So let's lay a groundwork for what it means to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's talk about what it means to openly declare that Jesus is Lord. Let's talk about what it means to openly declare your faith. All right. Paul tells us twice in this passage that it's through openly declaring that Jesus is Lord, openly declaring our faith that we are saved and that if we call on the name of the Lord, that we will be saved. And this is the thought that I want to pose to you today. I believe that Paul is painting a picture of baptism in this passage, okay? I believe that Paul is referring to calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus through the open declaration of faith that is baptism and that through that we are saved. Why through baptism are we saved? Well, it's a promise that when we are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the removal of our sins, that we will receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's a promise and that is the full ball of salvation. Okay. That is the whole package right there. So it's my personal belief that Paul is talking about the open declaration of our faith through baptism, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus when we are baptized. Peter did not tell thousands of people listening to his message in Acts chapter two, when the Holy Spirit was poured out for the very first time, he didn't tell thousands of people, well, if you just speak the name of Jesus, if you just call on the name of Jesus, then you will be saved. Okay? He said, repent or turn away from your sinful ways. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or removal of your sin. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For that promise is for you and your children and as many as are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. When Jesus had a conversation with Nicodemus, he told Nicodemus, you must be born again of water and of spirit to enter or even see the kingdom of heaven. Big, big news right from the mouth of Jesus. You must be born again of water and of spirit to enter or even see the kingdom of heaven. Jesus could have looked at Nicodemus and said, Nicodemus, if you just say my name, you will be saved and that will be it. All's well. He could have told Nicodemus, if you cry out to me, Nicodemus, right now, if you get on your knees and say, I believe that you are Lord Jesus, then you are saved and that is it. But that was not what Jesus said to Nicodemus. Jesus said, if you are born again of water and of spirit through baptism and through receiving the Holy Spirit, then you will enter the kingdom of heaven. 
Peter did not tell Cornelius. Okay, Cornelius, if you just call in the name of Jesus, your entire household will be saved. In Acts 10, that's not what he said. He preached Jesus and him crucified. And while Peter was preaching the word of God and the death, um, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit fell on Cornelius and his whole household. And everyone saw and heard them receive the Holy Spirit. And then Peter looked at the Jews that were with him and he said, can we stop these guys who were Gentiles, not Jews, not supposed to have access to salvation as far as the other Jews were concerned. He said, can we stop these guys from being baptized? What will, what will we stand in the way of them being baptized if we see and hear that they have received the Holy Spirit just like we have? When Paul found believers in Acts chapter 19 who had not yet um, been baptized in Jesus' name or received the Holy Spirit, he is having a conversation with them and he said to them, have you been baptized? Have you received the Holy Spirit? And they said, we haven't even heard of what you're talking about. We don't have a clue what you're saying to us right now. We have been baptized by John who baptized for repentance. Okay, this came before Jesus. And Paul said, whoa, let's get this done. He could have told them, if you just speak the name of Jesus, you will be saved. Paul could have said, if you just cry out to Jesus right now, you will be saved. Instead, he said, no, you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the removal of your sins. And then they received the Holy Spirit. They spoke in, they spoke in heavenly languages. They spoke in a prayer language, whatever term you want to use for it. That's what the scripture tells us. They did. Um, Paul himself had that same experience in Acts chapter 9, that he received the Holy Spirit and he was baptized in Jesus' name, okay? The guy that wrote most of the New Testament had that experience. He could have told people, just call on Jesus and you will be saved. And so, with all of that foundation, let's look back at these passages again. Romans chapter 10, okay? Our overall passage is 5 through 13, but let's look at 9 10 and 13 one more time before we wrap up. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now put that into context with the things we just talked about. Jesus and Nicodemus. Peter on the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit is poured out in the middle of this massive festival. Okay, um, Peter talking to Cornelius and his household in Acts chapter 10. Paul talking to the believers he had come upon. <sighs> telling them that they needed to do more than just be baptized for repentance. Put it in that context and now... Think about what openly declaring that Jesus is Lord means. Think about what openly declaring your faith means to you. Think about what calling on the name of the Lord Jesus means to you. If you have questions about this topic, we can talk about it here together. This is not a denominational issue. This is from the Word of God. We don't worry about denominations here in this group. We worry about the truth of the Word of God and how we can apply it to our hearts. Okay? If you understand these things and you have not yet done them and you desire to be baptized in Jesus name, please reach out to me and I promise you will find you someone in your area that will go and baptize you in Jesus name, requiring nothing of you except loving you and making sure you understand what you're doing. Okay. When we are baptized, we are promised that Holy Spirit will follow. There is no doubt about it. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you for taking this journey in particular with me today through the scriptures and listening to my heart on this topic. Go and read Romans chapter 10 verses 5 through 13. I also mentioned passages from John chapter 3, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 10, and Acts chapter 19 today as well. You know, it's told you lately you are loved and you are cherished and you are valuable. You have beautiful and tremendous worth, my sweet friend, and that worth is far above rubies. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You have two wonderful guest speakers coming to you on the weekend. Make sure that you tune in, let them know you're here, and that you appreciate their time on the weekends. And I will see you all again on Sunday. God bless you.